is Nenna, Nenna Wakama. And like I say, I come from the internet. I work with the World Wide Web Foundation as its Africa Regional Coordinator. At the World Wide Web Foundation, we do basically th three things. We work for access, access to broadband uh, internet connection. We work for participation, otherwise openness, good governance. And we also work for the free and open web in a program called Web We Want. So what one thing comes together in what we do at the Web Foundation, and that is social justice. So we do it in these three ways. And today, I'll be talking to you about the other part called participation, or otherwise known as our open data program. And you were at a conference in Addis Ababa recently, um, helping to draft an African data consensus. What is the African data consensus? Actually, the meeting itself was requested by African heads of states and African ministers. That's how important it was. What exactly were they wanting to know? They wanted to know what will be the tenets of an African data revolution. Data revolution for Africa, for Africa's development. So they asked the, the three big continental agencies, the African Development Bank, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and the African Union Commission to organize a high-level conference. And these two organizations stretched out their hand and invited the Web Foundation to partner in this as, uh, as the, the, the continental, if not the global voice in open data. And so we come to Addis Ababa, and we have something called the data communities. These are self-organizing organic communities who organize themselves around one subject, one issue around data. We had open data, of course. We had uh, something called CRVS, which is Civil Registration and Vital Statistics. We had official statistics. We had agriculture. We had uh, uh, extractives. We had gender. We had all different types of communities working towards one vision, working towards a set of issues, but most importantly, working towards action areas. And so the ADC, as it has come to be fondly known across the world, the African Data Consensus, is the consensus of all Africans. Those who were in Addis and those who were not in Addis, over a vision, over a definition of what they want the revolution to be, over principles for this revolution and over action areas. And you were talking to me earlier about the continent is notorious for having a lack of data or for having a stati official statistics that are incredibly out of date. And you were making the distinction between having data and statistics. Run us through that again. Um, if, if, you're, if you're going out in the morning and you need to know when the buses run, you don't need statistics at that time. What you need is get on an application that tells you the next bus to your destination leaves in 10 minutes. Now, that is data at its best. Okay? Um, what happens is that in research, um, in publications, in officialized statistics, we're looking at statistics that has gone, that has been churned, that has passed through the machine, that has obeyed um, standards and norms. But the truth is, these are information that date three years ago. So if you're reading something about um, demographics today, it is not today's info. It is not yesterday's info. It is not even last year's information. It's like three years ago. Okay? But what we're looking at in data revolution is a shift in the way we do things. Statistics is no longer enough. We need information now and here. We need information that matters the most. So we are looking at having data that is meant for life. We're looking at having data that allows you to take decision quick. We're looking at data that is manufactured, that is produced faster, that is needed more, and data that has participation of citizens. You see, it was wrong it is wrong of us to think that all oh, data is something that comes from government to citizens. That's wrong. These days, with all the work that the type like Tim Berners-Lee has done, democratizing the internet via the web, we have organizations that are producing data. Mobile users have data. Mobile companies have data. Hospitals have data. Most, there are data sources all over. And the data revolution 
is about encouraging all data holders to come up. So we don't no longer want to work in silos. We want to have a revolution. We want to have it for everyone. And that is why we as the Web Foundation, we bring open data to the table. Let us make data open by default. And these, this data is particularly important in terms of the things that are going to replace the Millennium Development Goals. Exactly. The SDGs. So explain how data will be embedded in those. Um, you'll be hearing more of our activities on the Sustainable Development Goals. But in a few months, we will be transitioning from Millennium Development Goals to Sustainable Development Goals. We have finished with this. We haven't finished, but we have reformulated. And you find out that the Sustainable Development Goals are actually wider. We have 16 of these goals now. So what we are looking at is we don't want to manage it the way we manage this, the MDGs. In the time of the MDGs, we talked about technology, but now technology is mainstream. We're not just talking ICT, we're talking about web. We're talking about interactive web. So you find out that monitoring, rollout of the MDGs, participation by citizens will be highly, highly, um, uh, maximized by the use of the web so we're looking at tracking this we're looking at measuring it and this is where data becomes critical and in this regard you are beginning to see more role of data in governance more role of data in in actions more role of data in measurement so we're looking at the SDGs powered by data and that explains why the united nations secretary general have actually asked for a global data consensus yeah. and what we find out is that for the first time africa is the first region to have its own data consensus and in order to have this vision of citizens producing their own data yes. citizens working with government you need a different attitude from government so tell me about the the Tanzania conference of open government partnership. Okay, um, you see, you can resist an army, but you cannot resist an idea whose time has come. Uh, openness, this is the, the time for openness. If you don't go open by yourself, openness will come to you. So in Tanzania, we had the Africa Regional Conference for the Open Government Partnership. The Open Government Partnership is a free will organization it's not constrained countries decide to adopt the principles of openness in administration openness in governance participation and in africa have signed up? we have eight governments in africa so far out of the over 60 members and more are coming in and our role as the web foundation is to bring policy support how do you open up your data how do you engage your citizens? How do you adopt the laws that you need? Because ultimately, it is everybody who gains when a government is well run. And can you have open government without freedom of information and freedom of information legislation? So it is not enough to say that data should be open. We need that political will so that when there is Co something contrary yeah. to it, then you can bring it to the yeah. uh, authorities and say, let's practice it. And the example you were giving me was that quite often people will have declarations of personal assets. Yes, I hear that change has come to Nigeria. So there's a hashtag, change is here. The president of Nigeria has declared his assets, yeah. and that actually is open. Yes. He is the first public servant of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and every Nigerian has knowledge. His vice president has done the same. We hope that the ministers will follow suit. Because Nigeria has a Freedom of Information Act, citizens do not need to give a reason to have information that belongs to them. That's the default. That's what should, it should be by default. And now, instead of fighting corruption, we go by instilling openness and governance. Because corruption thrives in darkness. It thrives in closed spaces. It thrives in silos. It thrives in non-rights environment. So what we're looking at is encouraging all countries to adopt a Freedom of Information Act in which freedom 
of information is a right to citizens to adopt open data by default so that if you have to hide it then it will be on you that you are closing data to tell the reason why if it's not national security it's not national defense well, why should you if somebody is a public servant paid by public taxes the public should have that information would have you have you wondered we pay for hospitals and we don't know where these hospitals are what what does it what does a state what does a government gain by hiding information of where bus stops are located so th th these are very very tiny information that you you, you want to think about so the, the, the thing is we need a change in our mentality we need to hack our minds we need a shift in the way we do things if we begin to think of our citizens as rightful owners of government then we know that the information we generate belongs to the citizens we will not just dump it on a website or go there we will put it out in open formats format that would allow citizens to harvest such information is it we will break it down in formats that will allow non-schooled citizens to be able to to read and understand we will also go a step further to put it in formats in which citizens who can neither read and who may not be able to see can also get that information so we are looking at a change a shift in paradigm in the way we deliver data to our citizens in the way we deliver administration in the way we govern ourselves.